Rev up your engines. Dog996 says, hey, Scotty, what's your opinion on Marvel Mystery Oil? Marvel Mystery Oil, I've been using that stuff since I was a kid. It is a very good oil oil. We get all junky engines. We'd soak them in it, break the rust loose, sometimes get them running. It's a very good oil for getting rust and crud out. The thing is, you can't use it like we did in the olden days. We would actually pour it in the carburetors and it would help lubricate the valves and clean stuff out. Some old timers will continue doing that on modern cars. No, don't do that because it's an oil. And if you pour oil in your air filter, that will ruin the catalytic converter. It can ruin the oxygen sensor. You don't want to do it on a modern car. On the old ones you could, but it is a very good oil. If you got old rusty stuff, you can soak them in them. You got an old car that you're fixing up, you can soak the stuff in it and put it in and lubricate stuff with it, but you don't pour in the gas of a modern car. You don't do it in a modern car. Mr. Singh says, yo, Scotty, what are your thoughts on a 2014 BMW X3 with 40,000 miles for $19,000? Well, if you consider how much money some fool paid for that thing when it was brand new, you're saving a whole bunch of money. But they become endless money pits. And your decision on that would be, how long are you going to keep it? Because let's say you're going to keep it for two or three years. Well, if you keep that thing for two or three years and then try to sell it, and then the thing is going to be eight, nine years old, you paid 19 grand, you'll be lucky if you get six for it. So if you're willing to lose that kind of money and buy a BMW, go ahead. The mileage is low enough that it shouldn't have any serious problems. But if you plan on keeping that thing forever, don't waste your money. You'll lose all 19,000 when it starts falling apart and then nobody's going to buy it off of you when it needs an engine or a transmission. Osvaldo D says, hey, Scotty, what do you think about a 96 four-cylinder Toyota Tacoma? Any issues I might run into? Toyota Tacomas were one of the best smaller pickup trucks ever made. A lot of those years had a problem with the frames rusting. It's old enough now that if you got one that's bad, just jack it up in the air or crawl under there. If that frame is rock solid, you hit it with hammers and there's no rust that doesn't go in, there's absolutely nothing wrong with buying that. But... If the frame's rotting, don't buy it because it needs a new frame. Unless you can call Toyota and pretend that you've already bought it and say, hey, I got this 96 Tacoma, the frame's rotting on it. Will you give me a new frame free? And if they say yes, then buy it and let them put a new frame on <laughs> I've had customers do that, and they got a new frame put on by Toyota. Turbo Squid, I'll say, Scotty, I got an 09 Honda Civic, and the battery terminals keep corroding. I've changed them multiple times. The corrosion keeps coming back. How can I fix this? Okay, well, if you really want to fix it permanently, throw the battery away and get another one. You got a crappy battery. It's outgassing too much. If batteries are cheaply made, then the outgas will be by the battery terminals, and that acid in the vapors will eat them up and start corroding. If you want to try the cheaper fix, go to like AutoZone and they sell those green and red battery terminal protectors. You take the terminal battery cables off, then you clean them all off, then you put those things on and they absorb some of the acid and then put the cables back on. But if that happens even with that, then just get another battery. It means your battery's crap and it's outgassing too much. It shouldn't outgas that too much. And of course, do have your alternator load tested because if it's putting out too much voltage, it'll boil the battery all the time and then it will outgas too much. So that's a simple test. The mechanic like me can do it in a minute with equipment to see if it is. Alex Bachman. Scotty, my wife's 2012 Honda Civic EX has a check charging system light. We have had several mechanics check the alternator, starter, battery, and a general charging system. System. Each mechanic said all the systems were fine. What could this be? Realize that you got a 2012 Honda. The charging system in that car is ultimately run by the main computer. And a lot of times that is a problem and that's what it does. It'll give you that warning. If you find a guy like me that will honestly put his gauges on your car while you watch. And if he checks the battery with it and then checks the alternator. And if he says the battery's good and the alternator's charging fine, just ignore it. But if he says, no, it's not charging right, it could easily be a problem in the computer or the wiring coming from the computer. I see that a lot in Hondas as they age because they're so complicated. They're making things too complicated. Instead of having a little mechanical voltage regulator to regulate the voltage, they now do a computer that controls the whole thing. And of course, when it breaks, then you got to buy a computer that costs over a thousand bucks. So more planned obsolescence on the way. Lakeside Oats says, Scotty, I'm thinking about getting a 2002 Oldsmobile Alero with 163,000 miles on it. Should I go ahead? That's a reasonable amount of mileage. If you're not paying much, go ahead. They can be okay vehicles. They're not great, but they're not terrible. You get it cheap enough and it runs okay, why not? But don't pay much. It's not worth much. You know, it's a 17-year-old GM car. Its value is practically nothing. If you can get it cheap enough and it runs okay, eh, go ahead. 
So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.